President Erdogan will have a cordial relationship with uh, President Biden. Now, when it comes to the East Mediterranean and specifically these talks that are going to resume today between Turkey and Greece, let's take a step back and remember that uh, these talks have started all the way back in 2002. And after 60 or so uh, attempts, uh, Greece unilaterally pulled out of this uh, in 2016. Now, Turkey has the largest um, coastline in the Eastern Mediterranean. There's obviously disputes that are not easy to resolve vis-a-vis uh, -vis the maritime rights uh, in the region. But also, Turkey and Greece has uh, much more in common than most people realize. And a part of operating in this, uh, in this region at large uh, does include uh, some elements of saber rattling. Uh, President Erdogan is well known for his uh, brinkmanship, but I think his staying power can be found in his pragmatism. So uh, yes, there are certain uh, hurdles to get over. Do I think these hurdles are gonna be um, uh, kind of achieved immediately? No, um, but I do think that all these fears about an open conflict between Greece and Turkey are uh, just um, uh, not really realistic. So I think President Erdogan will play his cards as he needs to uh, in order to create a right um, start with his relationship with the, uh, the new Biden administration. It's going to be fascinating to watch, isn't it? Um, Ozan, also wanted to tap into your financial market experience here and just get your take on the state of the Turkish economy and currency. Goldman Sachs was out last week with a call on the lira. They say 7 to 7.5 to the dollar over the next three months. And they say that further strengthening of the lira here might be constrained by central bank efforts to build FX reserves. Do you agree? Uh, not entirely. Um, I think the, um, the risks on the Turkish lira, uh, if anything, are on the, uh, the upside, meaning that the Turkish lira is susceptible to devaluation. Now, I avoid trying to give a specific range when it comes to um, uh, effects, just because we live in an unparalleled world uh, with dynamics that we have not witnessed before. So it's very difficult to predict specifically where the rate will be. But it is fair to say that Turkey has a structural current account deficit. Uh, which uh, we need to finance. And yes, reserves are a very potent tool uh, that the central bank with the new governor uh, stepping into a more orthodox monetary policy will want to rebuild. So therefore, even if you were to see a significant amount of foreign direct investment coming into Turkey, which I think in the context of the global pandemic will be not that easy, there will be a floor with the central bank trying to build this reserves back up to maybe a hundred hundred and twenty billion dollar level. Uh, so if anything, I think that um, uh, the movement will be uh, towards uh, maybe testing the high end of a seven handle or, or low eight handle. Is Turkey an attractive investment proposition right now? Well, look, for, uh, for uh, carry trade, absolutely, right? I mean, again, let's take a step back and just look at what's going on in the world. I mean, we are going through a once in a century pandemic. Uh, there is significant amount of liquidity in the market, and therefore yields are low and are kind of forecast to remain low. So therefore, investors will look at places where they can get a yield enhancement. Now, that means euro bonds, uh, that means uh, FX debt instruments, and Turkey has always been an attractive place uh, for a carry trade. And I do think that in 2021, that trend will continue. Now, whether that means we are going to be able to attract a sufficient what I refer to as a sticky long-term FDI into the country, uh, that's a tougher question to answer, uh, and it uh, will become more clear towards the second half of the year. But for the first half, Turkey uh, remains and will remain uh, to be an attractive carry trade destination.